The sociology of law or legal sociology is often described as a sub-discipline of sociology or an interdisciplinary approach within legal studies. Some see sociology of law as belonging necessarily to the field of sociology, but others tend to consider it a field of research caught up between the disciplines of law and sociology. Still others regard it neither a subdiscipline of sociology nor a branch of legal studies but as a field of research on its own right within the broader social science tradition. Accordingly, it may be described without reference to mainstream sociology as the systematic, theoretically grounded, empirical study of law as a set of social practices or as an aspect or field of social experience." It has been seen as treating law and justice as fundamental institutions of the basic structure of society mediating, "...between political and economic interests, between culture and the normative order of society, establishing and maintaining interdependence, and constituting themselves as sources of consensus, coercion and social control." Irrespective of whether sociology of law is defined as a sub-discipline of sociology, an approach within legal studies or a field of research in its own right, it remains intellectually dependent mainly on the traditions, methods and theories of mainstream sociology and, to a lesser extent, on other social sciences such as social anthropology, political science, social policy, criminology and psychology. As such, it reflects social theories and employs social scientific methods to study law, legal institutions and legal behavior. More specifically, sociology of law consists of various approaches to the study of law in society, which empirically examine and theorize the interaction between law, legal, non-legal institutions and social factors. Areas of socio-legal inquiry include the social development of legal institutions, forms of social control, legal regulation, the interaction between legal cultures, the social construction of legal issues, legal profession and the relation between law and social change. Sociology of law also benefits from and occasionally draws on research conducted within other fields such as comparative law, critical legal studies, jurisprudence, legal theory, law and economics and law and literature. Its object encompasses the historical movement of law and justice and their relentless contemporary construction such as in the field of jurisprudence focused on institutional questions conditioned by social and political situations, in interdisciplinary dominions such as criminology and through analysis of the economic efficiency and the social impact of legal norms. <laughs> Intellectual origins The roots of the sociology of law can be traced back to the works of sociologists and jurists of the turn of the previous century. The relationship between law and society was sociologically explored in the seminal works of both Max Weber and Emile Durkheim. The writings on law by these classical sociologists are foundational to the entire sociology of law today. A number of other scholars, mainly jurists, also employed social scientific theories and methods in an attempt to develop sociological theories of law. Notably among these were Leon Petrzycki, Eugen Ehrlich and Georges Gervich. For Max Weber, a so-called legal rational form, as a type of domination within society, is not attributable to people but to abstract norms. He understood the body of coherent and calculable law in terms of a rational legal authority. Such coherent and calculable law formed a precondition for modern political developments and the modern bureaucratic state and developed in parallel with the growth of capitalism. Central to the development of modern law is the formal rationalization of law on the basis of general procedures that are applied equally and fairly to all. Modern rationalized law is also codified and impersonal in its application to specific cases. In general, Weber's standpoint can be described as an external approach to law that studies the empirical characteristics of law, as opposed to the internal perspective of the legal sciences and the moral approach of the philosophy of law. Emile Durkheim wrote in The Division of Labor in Society that as society becomes more complex, the body of civil law concerned primarily with restitution and compensation grows at the expense of criminal laws and penal sanctions. Over time, law has undergone a transformation from repressive law to restitutive law. Restitutive law operates in societies in which there is a high degree of individual variation and emphasis on personal rights and responsibilities. For Durkheim, law is an indicator of the mode of integration of a society, which can be mechanical, among identical parts, or organic, among differentiated parts such as in industrialized societies. 
Durkheim also argued that a sociology of law should be developed alongside, and in close connection with, a sociology of morals, studying the development of value systems reflected in law. In Fundamental Principles of the Sociology of Law, Eugen Ehrlich developed a sociological approach to the study of law by focusing on how social networks and groups organized social life. He explored the relationship between law and general social norms and distinguished between positive law consisting of the compulsive norms of state requiring official enforcement, and living law, consisting of the rules of conduct that people in fact obeyed and which dominated social life. The latter emerged spontaneously as people interacted with each other to form social associations. The center of gravity of legal development therefore from time immemorial has not lain in the activity of the state, but in society itself, and must be sought there at the present time. This was subjected to criticism by the advocates of legal positivism such as the jurist Hans Kelsen for its distinction between law created by the state and law produced by the organizational imperatives of non-state social associations. According to Kelsen, Ehrlich had confused sign is and solen ought. However, some argued that Ehrlich was distinguishing between positive or state law, which lawyers learn and apply, and other forms of law, what Ehrlich called living law that regulate everyday life, generally preventing conflicts from reaching lawyers and courts. Leon Petrozicki distinguished between forms of official law, supported by the state, and intuitive law, consisting of legal experiences that, in turn, consist of a complex of psychic processes in the mind of the individual with no reference to outside authorities. Petritsky's work addressed sociological problems and his method was empirical, since he maintained that one could gain knowledge of objects or relationships only by observation. However, he couched his theory in the language of cognitive psychology and moral philosophy rather than sociology. Consequently, his contribution to the development of sociology of law remains largely unrecognized. For example, Petritsky's intuitive law influenced not only the development of Georges Gervich's concept of social law, see below, which in turn has left its mark on socio-legal theorizing, but also the work of later socio-legal scholars. Among those who were directly inspired by Petritsky's work is the Polish legal sociologist Adam Podgorecki. Theodor Geiger developed a close-knit analysis of the Marxist theory of law. He highlighted how law becomes a factor in social transformation in democratic societies of the kind that are governed by the consent expressed by universal suffrage of the population practiced at regular intervals." Geiger went on to develop the salient characteristics of his anti-metaphysical thinking, until he exceeded it with practical nihilism. Geiger's nihilism of values paved the way for a form of legal nihilism, which encourages the construction of a sober democracy. That is capable of raising conflict to the intellectual level and of anesthetizing feelings, as it is aware of its own inability to make any proclamation of value, ethics, or policy about the nature of truth. Georges Gervich was interested in the fusion of simultaneous manifestation of law in various forms and at various levels of social interaction. His aim was to devise the concept of social law as a law of integration and cooperation. Gervich's social law was an integral part of his general sociology. It is also one of the early sociological contributions to the theory of legal pluralism, since it challenged all conceptions of law based on a single source of legal, political, or moral authority. As a discipline, the sociology of law had an early reception in Argentina. As a local movement of legal scholars steaming from the work of Carlos Cosio, South American researchers have focused on comparative law and sociological insights, constitutional law and society, human rights, and psychosocial approaches to the legal practices. Topic: <laughs> Sociological approaches to the study of law. Topic: <laughs> Modern sociology of law. The sociology of law became clearly established as an academic field of learning and empirical research after the Second World War. After World War II, the study of law was not central in sociology, although some well-known sociologists did write about the role of law in society. In the work of Talcott Parsons, for instance, law is conceived as an essential mechanism of social control. 
In response to the criticisms that were developed against functionalism, other sociological perspectives of law emerged. Critical sociologists, developed a perspective of law as an instrument of power. However, other theorists in the sociology of law, such as Philip Selznick, argued that modern law became increasingly responsive to a society's needs and had to be approached morally as well. Still other scholars, most notably the American sociologist Donald Black, developed a resolutely scientific theory of law on the basis of a paradigm of pure sociology. Equally broad in orientation, but again different, is the autopoetic systems theory of the German sociologist Nicholas Luhmann, who presents law or the legal system as one of the ten function systems see functional differentiation of society. All collective human life is directly or indirectly shaped by law. Law is like knowledge, an essential and all-pervasive fact of the social condition. Social philosopher Jürgen Habermas disagrees with Luhmann and argues that the law can do a better job as a system institution by representing more faithfully the interests of everyday people in the life world. Yet another sociological theory of law and lawyers is that of Pierre Bourdieu and his followers, who see law as a social field in which actors struggle for cultural, symbolic and economic capital and in so doing develop the reproductive professional habitus of the lawyer. In several continental European countries empirical research in sociology of law developed strongly from the 1960s and 1970s. In Poland the work of Adam Podgorecki and his associates often influenced by Petrutsky's ideas was especially notable. In Sweden empirical research in sociology of law in this period was pioneered especially by Perstern Quist, and in Norway by Wilhelm Aubert. In more recent years, a very wide range of theories has emerged in the sociology of law as a result of the proliferation of theories in sociology at large. Among the recent influences can be mentioned the work of the French philosopher Michel Foucault, the German social theorist Jürgen Habermas, feminism, postmodernism and deconstruction, neo-Marxism, and behaviorism. The variety of theoretical influences in the sociology of law has also marked the broader law and society field. The multidisciplinary law and society field remains very popular, while the disciplinary speciality field of the sociology of law is also better organized than ever in institutional and professional respects. Topic. Law and society Law and society is an American movement, which was established after the Second World War through the initiative mainly of sociologists who had a vested interest in the study of law. The rationale of the law and society movement is subtly summed up in two short sentences by Lawrence Friedman. Law is a massive vital presence in the United States. It is too important to be left to lawyers. Its founders believed that the study of law and legal institutions in their social context could be constituted as a scholarly field distinguished by its commitment to interdisciplinary dialogue and multidisciplinary research methods. The establishment of the Law and Society Association in 1964 and of the Law and Society Review in 1966 guaranteed continuity in the scholarly activities of the Law and Society movement and allowed its members to influence legal education and policy making in the U.S. On one view, the main difference between the sociology of law and law and society is that the latter does not limit itself theoretically or methodologically to sociology and tries instead to accommodate insights from all social science disciplines. Not only does it provides a home for sociologists and social anthropologists and political scientists with an interest in law, it also tries to incorporate psychologists and economists who study law. From another point of view, both sociology of law and law and society should be seen as multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary enterprises although sociology of law has special ties to the methods, theories and traditions of sociology. During the 1970s and 1980s a number of original empirical studies were conducted by law and society scholars on conflict and dispute resolution. In his early work, William Felsteiner, for example, focused on alternative ways to solve conflicts avoidance, mediation, litigation etc. Together with Richard Abel and Austin Surratt, Felsteiner developed the idea of a disputes pyramid and the formula, naming, blaming, claiming, which refers to different stages of conflict resolution and levels of the pyramid. Topic. Sociological jurisprudence. 
The sociology of law is often distinguished from sociological jurisprudence. The latter is not primarily concerned with debates within mainstream sociology and instead engages with some of the debates within jurisprudence and legal theory. Sociological jurisprudence seeks to base legal arguments on sociological insights and, unlike legal theory, is concerned with the mundane practices that create legal institutions and social operations which reproduce legal systems over time. It was developed in the United States by Louis Brandeis and Roscoe Pound. It was influenced by the work of pioneer legal sociologists, such as the Austrian jurist Eugen Ehrlich and the Russian-French sociologist Georges Gervich. Although distinguishing between different branches of the social scientific studies of law allows us to explain and analyze the development of the sociology of law in relation to mainstream sociology and legal studies, such potentially artificial distinctions are not necessarily fruitful for the development of the field as whole. For the social scientific studies of law to transcend the theoretical and empirical limits, which currently define their scope, they need to go beyond such artificial distinctions. <laughs> Socio-legal studies Socio-legal studies in the UK has grown mainly out of the interest of law schools in promoting interdisciplinary studies of law. Whether regarded as an emerging discipline, sub-discipline or a methodological approach, it is often viewed in light of its relationship to, an oppositional role within, law. It should not, therefore, be confused with the legal sociology of many West European countries or the law and society scholarship in the U.S., which foster much stronger disciplinary ties with social sciences. In the past, it has been presented as the applied branch of the sociology of law and criticized for being empiricist and atheoretical. Max Travers, for example, regards socio-legal studies as a subfield of social policy, mainly concerned with influencing or serving government policy in the provision of legal services and adds that it "...has given up any aspirations it once had to develop general theories about the policy process." Notable practitioners of socio-legal studies include Professor Carol Smart, co-director of the Morgan Center for the Study of Relationships and Personal Life, named after the sociologist, David Morgan, as well as Professor Mavis McLean and John Ekelar who are joint directors of the Oxford Center for Family Law and Policy Socio-legal methods of investigation the sociology of law has no methods of investigation which have been developed specifically for conducting socio-legal research. Instead, it employs a wide variety of social scientific methods, including qualitative and quantitative research techniques, to explore law and legal phenomena. Positivistic as well as interpretive such as discourse analysis and ethnographic approaches to data collection and analysis is used within the socio-legal field. Topic. Sociology of law in Britain Sociology of law was a small, but developing, sub-field of British sociology and legal scholarship at the time when Campbell and Wiles wrote their review of law and society research in 1976. Unfortunately, despite its initial promise, it has remained a small field. Very few empirical sociological studies are published each year. Nevertheless, there have been some excellent studies, representing a variety of sociological traditions as well as some major theoretical contributions. The two most popular approaches during the 1960s and 1970s were interactionism and Marxism. Symbolic interactionism and Marxism Interactionism had become popular in America in the 1950s and 1960s as a politically radical alternative to structural functionalism. Instead of viewing society as a system regulating and controlling the actions of individuals, interactionists argued that sociology should address what people were doing in particular situations, and how they understood their own actions. The sociology of deviance, which included topics such as crime, homosexuality, and mental illness, became the focus for these theoretical debates. Functionalists had portrayed crime as a problem to be managed by the legal system. Labeling theorists, by contrast, focused on the process of law-making and enforcement, how crime was constructed as a problem. A number of British sociologists, and some researchers in law schools, have drawn on these ideas in writing about law and crime. The most influential sociological approach during this period was, however, Marxism. 
which claimed to offer a scientific and comprehensive understanding of society as a whole in the same way as structural functionalism, although with the emphasis on the struggle between different groups for material advantage, rather than value consensus. This approach cut the imagination of many people with left-wing political views in law schools, but it also generated some interesting empirical studies. These included historical studies about how particular statutes were used to advance the interests of dominant economic groups, and also Pat Carlin's memorable ethnography, which combined analytic resources from Marxism and interactionism, especially the sociology of Irving Goffman, in writing about magistrates' courts. The Oxford Center for Socio-Legal Studies The 1980s were also a fruitful time for empirical sociology of law in Britain, mainly because Donald Harris deliberately set out to create the conditions for a fruitful exchange between lawyers and sociologists at the University of Oxford Center for Socio-Legal Studies. He was fortunate enough to recruit a number of young and talented social scientists, including J. Maxwell Atkinson and Robert Dingwall who were interested in ethnomethodology, conversation analysis, and the sociology of the professions, and Doreen McBarnett who became something of a cult figure on the left after publishing her doctoral thesis, which advanced a particularly clear and vigorous Marxist analysis of the criminal justice system. Ethnomethodology has not previously been mentioned in this review, and tends to be overlooked by many reviewers in this field since it cannot easily be assimilated to their theoretical interests. One can note, however, that it has always offered a more radical and thorough-going way of theorizing action than interactionism although the two approaches have a lot in common when compared to traditions that view society as a structural whole, like Marxism or structural functionalism. During his time at the center, J. Maxwell Atkinson collaborated with Paul Drew, a sociologist at the University of York, in what became the first conversation analytic study of courtroom interaction, using transcripts of coroner's hearings in Northern Ireland. Another area of interest developed at Oxford during this period was the sociology of the professions. Robert Dingwall and Philip Lewis edited what remains an interesting and theoretically diverse collection, bringing together specialists from the sociology of law and medicine. The best-known study to date has, however, been published by the American scholar Richard Abel who employed ideas and concepts from functionalist, Marxist, and Weberian sociology to explain the high incomes and status that British lawyers enjoyed for most of the 20th century. Recent developments Since the 1980s, relatively few empirical studies of law and legal institutions have been conducted by British sociologists, i.e. studies which are empirical and at the same time engage with the theoretical concerns of sociology. There are, however, some exceptions. To begin with, sociology of law, along with so many areas of academic work, has been enlivened and renewed through engagement with feminism. There has been a great deal of interest in the implications of Foucault's ideas on governmentality for understanding law, and also in continental thinkers such as Nicholas Luhmann and Pierre Bourdieu. Again, one can argue that rather fewer empirical studies have been produced than one might have hoped, but a great deal of interesting work has been published. A second exception is to be found in the works of researchers who have employed resources from ethnomethodology and symbolic interactionism in studying legal settings. This type of research is clearly sociological rather than socio-legal research because it continually engages in debate with other theoretical traditions in sociology. Max Travers' doctoral thesis about the work of a firm of criminal lawyers took other sociologists, and especially Marxists, to task for not addressing or respecting how lawyers and clients understand their own actions a standard argument used by ethnomethodologists in debates with structural traditions in the discipline. It also, however, explored issues raised by legal thinkers in their critique of structural traditions in sociology of law, the extent to which social science can address the content of legal practice. Despite the relatively limited developments in recent empirical research, theoretical debates in sociology of law have been important in British literature during recent decades, with contributions from David Nelkin exploring the problems of a comparative sociology of law and the potential of the idea of legal cultures, Roger Cotterell seeking to develop a new view of the relations of law and community to replace what he sees as outdated law and society paradigms, and other scholars, such as David Schiff and Richard Nobles, examining the potential of Luhmannian systems theory and the extent to which law can be seen as an autonomous social field rather than as intimately interrelated with other aspects of the social. 
Also significant has been the burgeoning field of socio-legal research on regulation and government, to which British scholars have been prominent contributors. Devising a sociological concept of law In contrast to the traditional understanding of law see the separate entry on law, the sociology of law does not normally view and define the law only as a system of rules, doctrine and decisions, which exist independently of the society out of which it has emerged. The rule-based aspect of law is, admittedly, important, but provides an inadequate basis for describing, analyzing and understanding law in its societal context. Thus, legal sociology regards law as a set of institutional practices which have evolved over time and developed in relation to, and through interaction with, cultural, economic and socio-political structures and institutions. As a modern social system, law does strive to gain and retain its autonomy to function independently of other social institutions and systems such as religion, polity and economy. Yet, it remains historically and functionally linked to these other institutions. Thus, one of the objectives of the sociology of law remains to devise empirical methodologies capable of describing and explaining modern law's interdependence with other social institutions. Some influential approaches within the sociology of law have challenged definitions of law in terms of official state law. See, for example, Eugen Ehrlich's concept of living law and Georges Gervich's social law. From this standpoint, law is understood broadly to include not only the legal system and formal or official legal institutions and processes, but also various informal or unofficial forms of normativity and regulation which are generated within groups, associations and communities. The sociological studies of law are, thus, not limited to analyzing how the rules or institutions of the legal system interact with social class, gender, race, religion, sexuality and other social categories. They also focus on how the internal normative orderings of various groups and communities, such as the community of lawyers, businessmen, scientists, members of political parties, or members of the mafia, interact with each other. In short, law is studied as an integral and constitutive part of social institutions, groupings and communities. This approach is developed further under the section on legal pluralism. Topic. Non-Western sociology of law The interest in the sociology of law continues to be more widespread in Western countries. Some important research has been produced by Indian scholars, but we find only a limited amount of socio-legal work by researchers from, for example, the Middle East or Central and Northern parts of Africa. Thus, the global spread of sociological studies of law appears uneven and concentrated, above all, in industrialized nations with democratic political systems. In this sense, the global expansion of legal sociology is not taking place uniformly across national boundaries and appears to correlate with a combination of factors such as national wealth, poverty and form of political organization, as well as historical factors such as the growth of the welfare state. However, none of these factors alone can explain this disparity. Topic. Contemporary perspectives Topic. Legal pluralism Legal pluralism is a concept developed by legal sociologists and social anthropologists to describe multiple layers of law, usually with different sources of legitimacy, that exist within a single state or society." It is also defined, "...as a situation in which two or more legal systems coexist in the same social field." Legal pluralists define law broadly to include not only the system of courts and judges backed by the coercive power of the state, but also the "...non-legal forms of normative ordering." Legal pluralism consists of many different methodological approaches and as a concept, it embraces "...diverse and often contested perspectives on law, ranging from the recognition of different legal orders within the nation-state, to a more far-reaching and open-ended concept of law that does not necessarily depend on state recognition for validity. This latter concept of law may come into being whenever two or more legal systems exist in the same social field." 
The ideology of legal positivism has had such a powerful hold on the imagination of lawyers and social scientists that its picture of the legal world has been able successfully to masquerade as fact and has formed the foundation stone of social and legal theory. Legal pluralism has occupied a central position in socio-legal theorizing from the very beginning of the sociology of law. The sociological theories of Eugen Ehrlich and Georges Gervich were early sociological contributions to legal pluralism. It has, moreover, provided the most enduring topic of socio-legal debate over many decades within both the sociology of law and legal anthropology, and has received more than its share of criticism from the proponents of the various schools of legal positivism. The critics often ask, "...how is law distinguished in a pluralist view from other normative systems? What makes a social rule system legal?" The controversy arises mainly from the claim that the only true law is the law made and enforced by the modern state. This standpoint is also known as legal centralism. From a legal centralist standpoint, John Griffiths writes, law is and should be the law of the state, uniform for all persons, exclusive of all other law, and administrated by a single set of state institutions. Thus, according to legal centralism, Customary laws and religious laws are not properly called law except insofar as state has chosen to adopt and treat any such normative order as part of its own law. A distinction is often made between the weak and the strong versions of legal pluralism. The weak version does not necessarily question the main assumptions of legal centralism but only recognizes that within the domain of the Western state law other legal systems, such as customary or Islamic law, may also have an autonomous co existence. Thus, the weak version does not consider other forms of normative ordering as law. As Tamanaha, one of the critics of legal pluralism, puts it, Normative ordering is, well, normative ordering. Law is something else, something that we isolate out and call law. Quote dot. The strong version, on the other hand, rejects all legal centralist and formalist models of law, as a myth, an ideal, a claim, an illusion, regarding state law as one among many forms of law or forms of social ordering. It insists that modern law is plural, that it is private as well as public, but most importantly, the national public official legal system is often a secondary rather than the primary locus of regulation. The criticism directed at legal pluralism often uses the basic assumptions of legal positivism to question the validity of theories of legal pluralism which aim at criticizing those very positivistic assumptions. As Roger Cotterell explains, the pluralist conception should be understood as part of the legal sociologist's effort to broaden perspectives on law. A legal sociologist's specification of law might be different from that presupposed by a lawyer in practice, but it will relate indeed, in some way incorporate the latter because it must, if it is to reflect legal experience, take account of lawyers' perspectives on law. Thus a pluralist approach in legal theory is likely to recognize what lawyers typically recognize as law, but may see this law as one species of a larger genus, or treat lawyers' conception of law as reflecting particular perspectives determined by particular objectives. Autopoiesis Humberto Maturana and Francisco Varela originally coined the concept of autopoiesis within theoretical biology to describe the self-reproduction of living cells through self-reference. This concept was later borrowed, reconstructed in sociological terms, and introduced into the sociology of law by Nicholas Luhmann. Luhmann's systems theory transcends the classical understanding of object-subject by regarding communication and not action as the basic element of any social system. He breaks with traditional systems theory of Talcott-Parsons and descriptions based on cybernetic feedback loops and structural understandings of self-organization of the 1960s. This allows him to work towards devising a solution to the problem of the humanized subject. Perhaps the most challenging idea incorporated in the theory of autopoiesis is that social systems should not be defined in terms of human agency or norms, but of communications. Communication is in turn the unity of utterance, information, and understanding and constitutes social systems by recursively reproducing communication. 
This sociologically radical thesis, which raises the fear of a dehumanized theory of law and society, attempts to highlight the fact that social systems are constituted by communicative. According to Roger Cotterell, Luhmann treats the theory as the basis for all general sociological analysis of social systems and their mutual relations. But its theoretical claims about law's autonomy are very powerful postulates, presented in advance of and even, perhaps, in place of the kind of detailed empirical study of social and legal change that comparatists and most legal sociologists are likely to favor. The postulates of autopoiesis theory do not so much guide empirical research as explain conclusively how to interpret whatever this research may discover. Topic. Legal cultures. Legal culture is one of the central concepts of the sociology of law. The study of legal cultures may, at the same time, be regarded as one of the general approaches within the sociology of law. As a concept, it refers to "...relatively stable patterns of legally oriented social behavior and attitudes," and as such is regarded as a subcategory of the concept of culture. It is a relatively new concept which, according to David Nelkin, can be traced to Terms like legal tradition or legal style, which have a much longer history in comparative law or in early political science. It presupposes and invites us to explore the existence of systematic variations in patterns in law in the books and law in action, and, above all, in the relation between them. As an approach, it focuses on the cultural aspects of law, legal behavior and legal institutions and, thus, has affinity with cultural anthropology, legal pluralism, and comparative law. Lawrence M. Friedman is among socio-legal scholars who introduced the idea of legal culture into the sociology of law. For Friedman, legal culture "...refers to public knowledge of and attitudes and behavior patterns toward the legal system." It can also consist of bodies of custom organically related to the culture as a whole. Friedman stresses the plurality of legal cultures and points out that one can explore legal cultures at different levels of abstraction, e.g. at the level of the legal system, the state, the country, or the community. Friedman is also known for introducing the distinction between the «internal» and «external» legal cultures. Somewhat oversimplified, the former refers to the general attitudes and perceptions of law among the functionaries of the legal system, such as the judiciary, while the latter can refer to the attitude of the citizenry to the legal system or to law and order generally. Feminism Law has always been regarded as one of the important sites of engagement for feminism. As pointed out by Ruth Fletcher feminist engagement with the law has taken many forms through the years, which also indicates their successful merging of theory and practice. Through litigation, campaigns for reform and legal education, feminists have engaged explicitly with law and the legal profession. In taking on the provisions of specialist advice services, women's groups have played a role in making law accessible to those in need. By subjecting legal concepts and methods to critical analysis, feminists have questioned the terms of legal debate. Topic: <inaudible> Globalization. Globalization is often defined in terms of economic processes which bring about radical cultural developments at the level of world society. Although law is an essential ingredient of the process of globalization, and important studies of law and globalization were already conducted in the 1990s by, for example, Yves de Zalai and Bryant Garth and Volkmer Gessner, law's importance for creating and maintaining the globalization processes are often neglected within the sociology of globalization and remain, arguably, somewhat underdeveloped within the sociology of law, as pointed out by Halliday and Asinski. Economic globalization cannot be understood apart from global business regulation and the legal construction of the markets on which it increasingly depends. Cultural globalization cannot be explained without attention to intellectual property rights institutionalized in law and global governance regimes. The globalization of protections for vulnerable populations cannot be comprehended without tracing the impact of international criminal and humanitarian law or international tribunals. 
Global contestation over the institutions of democracy and state building cannot be meaningful unless considered in relation to constitutionalism. The socio legal approaches to the study of globalization and global society often overlap with, or make use of, studies of legal cultures and legal pluralism. Professional associations or societies Research Committee on Sociology of Law Socio-Legal Studies Association International Institute for the Sociology of Law Law and Society Association Vereinigung für Recht und Gesellschaft The Law and Society Association of Australia and New Zealand Inc. Two Canadian Law and Society Association, Association Canadien Droit et Société (CLSA, ACDS). Three RT13 Thematic Network, Sociology of Law of the French Sociological Association. Four Sociedad Argentina de Sociología Jurídica. Five Associazioni di Studi su Diritto e Società. Italy. Six Japanese Association of Sociology of Law. Seven Brazilian Sociology of Law Association. Abreesti. Eight Topic Journals. The North Nordic Journal of Law and Justice 9 Zeitschrift für Rechtsoziologie 10 Law and Social Inquiry 11 Law and Society Review The Journal of Law and Society 12 Journal of Empirical Legal Studies Canadian Journal of Law and Society Review Canadien Droit et Société since 1985 13 Canadian Journal of Women and the Law since 1985 14 Droit et Société Paris France since 1985 15 International Journal of the Sociology of Law since 1978 Onyati Socio Legal Series Onyati, Spain, since 2011 16 Revista Brasileira de Sociologia do Diareto Brazil, since 2014 17 Review Interdisciplinaire d'Etudes Juridiques Brussels, Belgium, since 1978 Social and Legal Studies London, United Kingdom, since 1992 18 Sociologia del Diritto Milan, Italy, since 1974 19 Zeitschrift für Rechtsoziologie The German Journal of Law and Society 20 Topic Research Centers American Bar Foundation Baldi Center for Law and Social Policy Brazilian Sociology of Law Association Abreesti, Brazil Sociology of Law Institute, Lund University, Sweden Center d'Etude, de Technique et d'Evaluation Legislatives Université de Genève Center for Law and Society, School of Law, University of Edinburgh Center for Socio-Legal Research, University of Cape Town, South Africa Center for Socio-Legal Studies, University University of Natal, South Africa Center for Socio-Legal Studies, University of Oxford Center for the Study of Law and Society, California, Berkeley, USA European Academy for Law and Legislation Foundation for Law, Justice and Society, Wolfson College, Oxford Institute of Global Law Institute of Law and Social Sciences, Meiji University, Tokyo, Japan Institute for Legal Studies, University of Wisconsin, USA International Institute for the Sociology of Law, Onyati Justice Policy Research Research Center, University of Newcastle, Australia Laboratoire de Sociologie Juridique Pantheon Assis University Legal Intersections Research Center, University of Wollongong, Australia Observatorio Permanente da Justica Portuguesa Coimbra, Oxford Centre for Family Law and Policy, UK Research Institute for Law, Politics and Justice Kiel University Topic See also Wilhelm Aubert Erhard Blankenberg Jean Carbonier Roger Cotterell Emile Durkheim Eugen Ehrlich William L. F. Felsteiner Lawrence M. Friedman Theodor Geiger Volkmer Gessner Nicholas Luhmann Henry James Sumner Main Bronislaw Malinowski David Nelkin Adam Podgoretsky Roscoe Pound Philip Selznick Perstern Quist Renato Treves William Graham Sumner Nicholas Timashev Max Weber Topic Notes Topic References Abel, Richard L. 1980. Redirecting Social Studies of Law. In 14 Law and Society Review 803-29. Agersnap, Torben. 2000. Theodor Geiger, Pioneer of Sociology in Denmark. In Acta Sociologica, Vol. 43, No. 4, pp. 325-330. 
Arnaud, André Jean 2007. Carbonier, Jean. In Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives Thousand Oaks, Sage. Arnaud, André Jean and Vittorio Olgiati on Complexity and Socio-Legal Studies, Some European Examples Onyati Proceedings 14. Atkinson, J. Maxwell and Paul Drew 1983 Order in Court, The Organization of Verbal Interaction in Courtroom Settings. London, Macmillan. Aubert, Wilhelm, ed. 1969 Sociology of Law London, Penguin. Aubert, Wilhelm 1994 Continuity and Development in Law and Society Oslo, Norwegian University Press. Aubert, Wilhelm 1969. Law as a Way of Resolving Conflicts, the Case of a Small Industrialized Society. In Laura Nader, ed., Law in Culture and Society Chicago, Aldine Publishing Company. Banacker, Reza 2014, Normativity in Legal Sociology, Methodological Reflections on Law and Regulation in Late Modernity Heidelberg, Springer. Banacker, Reza and Max Travers eds. 2013, Law and Social Theory Oxford, Hart Publishing. Banacker, R. 2011, The Sociology of Law, From Industrialization to Globalization. Sociopedia.isa, 2011, U of Westminster School of Law Research Paper No. 1103. Available at SSRN, http colon slash slash ssrn.com slash abstract equals 1761466. Banacker, R. 2000. Integrating Reciprocal Perspectives, on Georges Gervich's Theory of Immediate Jural Experience. 16 1, Canadian Journal of Law and Society. Available at SSRN http colon slash slash papers dot SSRN dot com slash sol three slash papers dot CFM question mark abstract underscore it equals one seven 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 one six seven Banacker, R two thousand two Sociological Jurisprudence in R. Banacker and M. Travers, eds. Introduction to Law and Social Theory, Oxford, Hart. Banacker, Reza 2009. Law Through Sociology's Looking Glass, Conflict and Competition in Sociological Studies of Law. In the new ESA Handbook in Contemporary International Sociology, Conflict, Competition, and Cooperation, Ann Dennis, Deborah Colican Fishman, eds. London, Sage. An e-copy available at http colon slash slash papers dot ssrn dot com slash sol three slash papers dot cfm question mark abstract underscore it equals one three two seven oh two five. Banacker, Reza, two thousand eight. The Politics of Legal Cultures. In Retfaird, the Nordic Journal of Law and Justice, two thousand eight. Available at SSRN, http colon slash slash SSRN dot com slash abstract equals one three two three three seven one. Banacker, R. 2006. Sociological Jurisprudence. In Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives. Thousand Oaks, Sage. Banacker, R. and Travers, M. 2005. Law, Sociology and Method. In Theory and Method in Socio-Legal Research, pp. 1-25. Edited by Banacker, R. and Travers, M. Oxford, Hart Publishing, 2005. Banacker, R. 2003 Merging Law and Sociology, Beyond the Dichotomies of Socio-Legal Research Berlin, Wisconsin, Galda and Wilch. Banacker, R. and Max Travers, 2002 Introduction to Law and Social Theory Oxford, Hart Publishing. Barzilai, Gad 2003 Communities and Law, Politics and Cultures of Legal Identities Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press. Baxi U 1986 Towards a Sociology of Indian Law. New Delhi, Stavayan. Black, D 1976 The Behavior of Law New Haven, Conn, Yale University Press. Black, D 1972 The Boundaries of Legal Sociology. In Yale Law Journal 81. Campbell, C. M. and Wiles, P. 1976. The Study of Law in Society in Britain. In Law and Society Review 10-547-78. Chiba, Masaji 1989. Legal Pluralism, Toward a General Theory Through Japanese Legal Culture Tokyo, Japan, Tokai University Press. 
Cotterell, Roger 1999, Emile Durkheim, Law in a Moral Domain, Stanford University Press. Cotterell, Roger 2007, Sociology of Law, in Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives Thousand Oaks, Sage. Cotterell, Roger 2006, Law, Culture and Society, Legal Ideas in the Mirror of Social Theory Aldershot, Ashgate. Cotterell, Roger 1992, The Sociology of Law, An Introduction Oxford, Oxford University Press. Cotterell, Roger 1995, Law's Community, Legal Theory in Sociological Perspective Oxford, Clarendon Press. Cotterell, Roger 2008, Living Law, Studies in Legal and Social Theory Aldershot, Ashgate. Cotterell, Roger 2018, Sociological Jurisprudence, Juristic Thought and Social Inquiry New York, London, Routledge. Cotterell, Roger, ed. 2006, Law in Social Theory Aldershot, Ashgate. Cotterell, Roger, ed. 2001, Sociological Perspectives on Law Two Vols, Aldershot, Ashgate. Zarnota, Adam. Podgoretsky, Adam. In Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives Thousand Oaks, Sage. Dalberg Larson, Jorgen, 2000, The Unity of Law, An Illusion, Berlin, Galda plus Wilch Verlag. Dieflem, Matthew, 2008, Sociology of Law, Visions of a Scholarly Tradition, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 21. Dieflem, Matthew, 2007, Sociological Theories of Law, pp. 1410-1413 in Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives, edited by David S. Clark. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage Publications, 22. Dezali, Eve and Bryant G. Garth 1996, Dealing in Virtue, International Commercial Arbitration and the Construction of a Transnational Legal Order. Chicago Series in Law and Society. Diva the First, ed. 2005, Sociology of Law, New Delhi, Oxford University Press. Durkheim, Emil, 1984, The Division of Labor in Society, Transal, W. D. Halls, London, Macmillan, Ridge, 1893, De la Division du Travail Social. Ehrlich, Eugen, 1936, Fundamental Principles of the Sociology of Law, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, Ridge. 1912 Grundelgung der Soziologie des Recht. Feast, Johannes and David Nelkin 2007 Adapting Legal Cultures. Oxford, Hart. Felsteiner, W., Abel, R. and Surratt, A. 1981. The Emergence and Transformation of Disputes, Naming, Blaming, Claiming. Co-authored with Richard Abel and Austin Surratt, 15 Law and Society Review 401. Ferrari, V. 1989. Sociology of Law, a Theoretical Introduction. In Ferrari, V. and Usatalu, P. 2 Lectures on the Sociology of Law, pp. 7-31 Helsinki, University of Helsinki, 1989 Sociology of Law Series, No. 6 100 firsts. Ferrari, Vincenzo 1990, ed. Developing Sociology of Law. A Worldwide Documentary Enquiry Milano, Giuffre. Ferrari, V. 2007, Treves, Renato, in Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives, Thousand Oaks, Sage. Fletcher, Ruth, 2002, Feminist Legal Theory, in Reza Banacker and Max Travers, An Introduction to Law and Social Theory, Oxford, Hart Publishing, 2002. Flood, John, 2005, Socio-Legal Ethnography in Theory and Method in Socio-Legal Research, 33-48 in R. Banacker and M. Travers, Hart Publishing, Oxford. Flood, John, 1979, Barristers' Clerks, 4 Journal of the Legal Profession, 23-39. Friedman, L. M., 1986, The Law and Society Movement, in Stanford Law Review, 38-763-780. Friedman, L. M. 1975, the Legal System, A Social Science Perspective New York, Russell Sage Foundation. Friedman, L. M. and Rogelio Perez Perdomo 2003, eds. Legal Culture in the Age of Globalization, Latin America and Latin Europe Stanford University Press. Friedman, L. M. 2002, American Law in the Twentieth Century New Haven, Yale University Press. 
Galanter, Mark Justice in Many Rooms, Courts, Private Ordering and Indigenous Law in 1981-19 Journal of Legal Pluralism and Unofficial Law. Gessner, Volkmer and Ali Jem Budak 1998, Emerging Legal Certainty, Empirical Studies on the Globalization of Law Onati International Series in Law and Society. Gezi, M. L. 2007, Un Precursor del Nichilismo Juridico. Theodor Geiger e l'antimetaphysica sociale in Sociologia del Dirittito Issue, 3. Griffiths, John 1986, What is Legal Pluralism in Journal of Legal Pluralism 24-1-55. Griffiths, Ann 2002, Legal Pluralism in Banacker and Travers, 2002. Gervich, Georges, Hunt, Allen 1942, New Edition 2001. Max Weber and Eugene Ehrlich. Sociology of Law. Athens, Transaction Publishers. ISBN 0-7658-0704-1. Jerry, David, Julia Jerry 1995. Collins Dictionary of Sociology. HarperCollins. ISBN 0-00-470804-0. Johnson, Allen 1995. The Blackwell Dictionary of Sociology. Blackwell's Publishers. ISBN 1-55786-116-1. Halliday, Terence C. and Pavel Asinsk 2006 Globalization of Law in Annual Review of Sociology. Hammerslev, Ohl 2007 Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives Thousand Oaks, Sage. Hunt, Allen 1993 Explorations in Law and Society. New York, Routledge. Hunt, Allen and Wickham, Gary 1994. Foucault and Law, Towards a Sociology of Law as Governance. London, Pluto Press. Haydn, Hawken 1986 Sociology of Law in Scandinavia in 13 Journal of Law and Society. Kalleberg, Ragenwald 2000, The most important task of sociology is to strengthen and defend rationality in public discourse, on the sociology of Wilhelm Aubert in Acta Sociologica 43, 399. Cronman, Anthony T. 1983, Max Weber. Stanford University Press. Kurchuski, Jacek 2009, The Legacy of Leon Petrzycki in Law and Society Studies, Editorial Debate Societas, Communitas 1, 7. Lista C. 2004, the Development of Sociology of Law, The Case of Argentina. RCSL Newsletter Autumn 3-4. Lumen, Nicholas 2004, Law as a Social System, translated by Klaus A. Ziegert Oxford University Press. Lumen, Nicholas 1995, Social Systems. Stanford CA, Stanford University Press. Lumen, Nicholas 1985, A Sociological Theory of Law London, Routedge and Keegan Paul. Macaulay, S. 1963, Non-Contractual Relations in Business in American Sociological Review, at 28-55-67. McBarnett, Doreen 1981, Conviction, The Law, The State and the Construction of Justice Macmillan. Malinowski, Bronislaw 1926, Crime and Custom in Savage Society. Mary, Sally Engel 1988, Legal Pluralism in 22 Law and Society Review 869-901 at 870. Maturana, H. R. and Varela, F. J. Autopoiesis and Cognition Boston, M. A., Rydell. Matheson, Thomas 2005, Ratan I. Samhalet, An Introduction to Ratsociologen Lund, Student Literature. Munger, Frank 1998, Mapping Law and Society in A. Surat, ed., Crossing Boundaries Northwestern University Press. Nelkin, David 2009, Beyond Law in Context Asgate. Nelkin, David 2007, Culture, Legal in Clark, David S. ed., Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives. London, Sage, pp. 369-70. Nelkin, David 2004, Using the Concept of Legal Culture, Australian Journal of Legal Philosophy Vol. 29. Nobles, Richard and David Schiff 2006, A Sociology of Jurisprudence. Oxford, Hart. Nobles, Richard and David Schiff 2013, Observing Law Through Systems Theory. Oxford, Hart. Nonet, Philippe and Philip Selznick 1978, Law and Society in Transition. Toward Responsive Law. New York, Octagon Books. Papa Cristo, T.K. The Sociological Approach of Law. 
Sociology of Law in Greek. Athens, A. N. Sakula's Publishers. ISBN 960-15-0106-1. Olgiati, Vittorio 2007, Pluralism, Legal in Encyclopedia of Law and Society, American and Global Perspectives Thousand Oaks, Sage. Olgiati, Vittorio 2009, The Notion of Legal Pluralism, A Theoretical Assessment in Societas, Communitas 1 7. Petrozicchi, Leon 1955, Law and Morality. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. Podgoretsky, Adam 1991, A Sociological Theory of Law. Milano, Dot. A. Jufri Editor. Podgoretsky, Adam 1980, Unrecognized Father of Sociology of Law, Leon Petrozicchi, Law and Society Review 15-183-202. Podgoretsky, Adam Knowledge and Opinion about Law. London, M. Robertson. Podgoretsky, Adam Law and Society. London, Routledge. Pound, Roscoe, 1943. Sociology of Law and Sociological Jurisprudence, University of Toronto Law Journal 5. Reinstein, M. 1954. Max Weber on Law and Economy in Society. Harvard University Press. Rodeluthner, H. La sociologie du droit et à la magna, 109. Rodeluthner, H. Rechts theoretische Probleme der Sociologie des Rechts, 521. Rumble, Wilfred E. Jr. Legal Realism, Sociological Jurisprudence and Mr. Justice Holmes. Journal of the History of Ideas 1965 26, No. 4, pp. 547 566 in JSTOR. Santos, Bovantura de Souza, 2002, Toward a New Legal Common Sense. London, Butterworth. Surratt, Austin, ed., Blackwell Companion to Law and Society, Malden, Mass., and Oxford, Blackwell, 2004. Scuro Netu, p. 2010, Sociologia Geral e Juridica. Sao Paulo, Sariva, 7th ed. Selznick, p. 1965. The Sociology of Law. In Sociology Today edited by Robert Merton et al. New York, Harper and Row. Selznick, P. 1969, Law, Society and Industrial Justice, New York, Russell Sage Foundation. Simon, Jonathan, 1999, Law After Society. In 24 Law and Social Inquiry 143-94 at 144. Sternquist, Per, 1983. N aspect pa ratsociologisk forskning. I1 Tidskreit für Ratsociologie 7. Tamanaha, B. 1993. The Folly of the Social Scientific Concept of Legal Pluralism. In Journal Odd Law and Society 20 192 217. Thomas, P. 1997. Socio Legal Studies The Case of Disappearing Fleas and Bustards. In Phil Thomas, ed., Socio Legal Studies, pp. 1 22. Aldershot, Dartmouth. Teubner, Gunther. Global Law Without a State, Dartmouth. Timashef, Nicholas S. 1939, An Introduction to the Sociology of Law, Westport, Greenwood Press Reprint, 1974. Tomasic, Roman. 1987, the Sociology of Law, London, Sage Publications. Travers, Max 2009, Understanding Law and Society London. Travers, M. 2001, Sociology of Law in Britain. In American Sociologist 32-26-40. Travers, M. 1997, Law in Action, The Reality of Law, Work and Talk in a Firm of Criminal Lawyers Aldershot, Ashgate. Trevino. Javier, 2008, The Sociology of Law, Classical and Contemporary Perspectives. New York, St. Martin's Press, 1996, reissued with a new introduction. New Brunswick, N.J., Transaction Publishers. Trevino, A. Javier, ed., 2008, Talcott Parsons, On Law and the Legal System, Newcastle, Cambridge Scholars Publishing. Van Klink, Bart, 2006. Facts and Norms, The Unfinished Debate Between Eugen Ehrlich and Hans Kelsen. Available at SSRN, http colon slash slash ssrn.com slash abstract equals 980957. Woodman, G. R. 2008. 
the possibilities of coexistence of religious laws with other laws. In Medi, R. et al., eds., Law and Religion in Multicultural Societies. Copenhagen, DJOF Publishing. Ziegert, Klaus A. 2002. The Thick Description of Law, An Introduction to Nicholas Luhmann's Theory of Operatively Closed Systems. In R. Banacker and M. Travers, eds., An Introduction to Law and Social Theory Oxford, Hart Publishing. Ziegert, Klaus A. 1979. The Sociology Behind Eugen Ehrlich's Sociology of Law", International Journal of Sociology of Law 7-225-73. Zipelius, Reinhold Grundbegriff der Rechts- und Staatssoziologie, 3rd, ed., Tübingen, Moore Siebeck, ISBN 978-3-16-151801-0 The Nordic Journal of Law and Justice 23 Zeitschrift für Rechtsoziologie 24 The Journal of Law and Society 25 American Sociological Association Section Sociology of Law International Sociological Association Research Committee on Sociology of Law RC 12 Sokofla Net website of Matthew Deflam's Sociology of Law Cambridge University Press 2008 Socio-Legal Studies Association Law and Society Association Foundation for Law, Justice and Society